Hello, this is Adam Watson at Watson Ed Tech, and I'm here today to talk about Google Jamboard. Uh, Google Jamboard's been around for a while. Uh, it just took me a while to uh, uh, wake up to it and uh, talk about it and realize how useful of a tool it can be, not least of which because it's free and built into the Google Suite. And uh, today's screencast is mainly going to concentrate on how to make one. We can get to the Google Jamboards and to all your jams by either going up here to jamboard.google.com or you can click on your waffle and I actually drag Jamboard over to my first pane, if you will, but uh, you may see it down here somewhere as far as um, in your particular interface. And again, you can drag it up here if you want a quicker or shorter way to get to it. So the waffle iron or simply going to jamboard.google.com. Once you're there, you're going to see the interface like you see it here. So our recent jams are showing. The default interface shows all the jams uh, owned by anyone, either ones that you created, and obviously you'd be the owner, or ones owned by someone else that have included you as a collaborator. You can also change the interface to just the ones owned by me or the other side, not owned by me. But uh, here's a recent jam we're going to come back to near the end of our screencast. When we're ready to make a new jam on the jam board, then it's just this giant orange plus button. Uh, maybe it's not giant, it's a little smaller. But it's in the bottom right hand corner. And by, by uh, pressing that plus button, we've created a new jam. Okay, so the first thing is, is that our interface, in order to rename it, we can just click on that here. Very simple. Again, very easy intuitive tools, as you'd probably expect from Google. On the left side, you have the different uh, tools, the toolbar, if you will, for the different things you can do inside of a Google Jamboard. Uh, the first one here is a different kind of pen writing uh, uh, doodling tools. You've got a pen, a marker, a highlighter, and a brush. I'll choose brush here for a minute. The default color is black, but you can change that to another color. And let's go with green. Once that happens, Go onto our interface and doodle and draw away. Um, here's a quick tip and a nice thing when you're in marker mode. It's almost like you have a little laser dot. So if I was showing this in front of a class and doing kind of a demonstration thing, that might be a, a way of kind of tracking the, the movement of my cursor. We also have an eraser, which works as you'd expect it to. We also can press it and clear the board like that. It should be noted also that you can go backwards and forwards in the undo redo to make certain things go away. Next we have a select button. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. A sticky note and an add image opportunity. So let's do a sticky note first. The sticky note. Here is an example. We have here the ability to change the color. Let's do that in pink. And the thing I want to notate here is this little bar. As you type more, notice that the bar is moving. It will get to the point where it will actually highlight in red and at some point tap out and you basically are at the maximum amount of characters for a sticky note. So just keep that in mind. Another thing that I discovered is that hyperlinks do not work inside of the sticky note. So you could type it as, as any other letter or words, but there's nothing clickable about it. And last but not least, um, uh, notice that it is what it is as far as the interface and the words. You're not able to change the font, gold, bold, italic, underline, or anything like that. It's meant for just uh, uh, simple typing to keep it as simple as possible. I click Save. Notice that the interface allows me I could go right into making another sticky note that by default it's the same color as my last one if I want to. But I can also just hit Cancel and get out of that interface. Once the sticky note is made, okay, we can click on the select tool to choose it and move it around and resize it and rotate it. And if we click on these three dots here, we can go back into editing mode to change the type. We can also duplicate it or even delete the note. That said, note that the select tool does not allow us to grab doodles, right? We're clicking and clicking, nothing's happening. So the only way you can make those go away in the midst of making a Google Jamboard, a new jam, um, is the eraser button, actually. 
um, unless you catch it just right at that right moment where you can undo it without undoing the work you've done since then. So do keep that in mind. Last but not least, we have the Add Image button. And the thing to note about that is that we can do a Google image search. So we can go to the web to find an image and grab and pull it in. We can also search our own Google Drive or our Google Photos. But that's it. What you're not able to do is you're not able to upload an image from your own um, hard drive of, say, your laptop. So if it's not inside your Google Drive or Photos, and it's not something you can search and grab uh, at this point, as of today's screencast at least, uh, that option of uploading uh, is not available. Cancel out of that. The next thing to point out is the frame bar. Now, these background spaces is, is a frame. Um, Keep in mind that if you, for a uh, reason, want to create a new space, a new frame, it's as simple as clicking this button here. Now you have a new blank space that you can draw something if you like. There we go. Insert another sticky note. Here you go. our select tool so we can take that, drag it, move it, expand it. Aha, right? Uh, the navigation is very simple. So we can go back and forth to those frames. We can certainly add additional ones. If we click the middle area and we expand the frame bar, it gives us an opportunity of another way of navigating. So we can go back and forth like this. And we can also, within this interface, duplicate or delete them very quickly. And last but not least, we can add frames. And this would be nice that if, for example, in between these two, you would like to put a frame in between the two of them, you can quickly do that by adding the button, uh, hitting this Add Frame button right here. So I'll make that go away. Next up, we are talking about the Share button. Let's talk about sharing. So, of course, by default, like all Google Docs, uh, you know, it starts off as private. But if you click the Share button, you do have some opportunities. You can invite uh, specific people to edit or view it, just like you could in the, with uh, other Google files. The default about this link is that this link would only be usable by collaborators at first. However, by changing it, say anyone with this link can view, then this link becomes something that you could throw out there and like any other Google Doc or file. Uh, even without a Google account, uh, in this example, someone could click on it and be able to see it. Uh, you could also have anyone be able to edit it as well. Um, so you can create those uh, easy opportunities for, for example, a whole class full of, of people to collaborate and work and uh, use this Jamboard. Last but not least is these three dots. Uh, you can see your menu options there. So there is some exportable opportunities here. You can download it as a PDF, uh, save it as a image file, um, make a copy of it. The jam code is interesting here. <clears throat> so that might be, you might look at that as an opportunity that how could you easily uh, create an opportunity for um, anyone within your domain. So this is a G Suite education or business thing uh, to find or access that jam. Um, but from my perspective, it would probably be uh, like a learning management system that you would be sharing a link with and everyone clicks on and they could jump right in. Uh, it's probably the most uh, easy going way <laughs> to get to that within a limited amount of people. All right, so that is all the opportunities of creating a jam. But I will mention before we go <clears throat> that by clicking here, okay, we're going back to here. I want to go back to the sample jam board I made earlier. And I just want to highlight, you know, in this Jamboard, some of the things we've been talking about all along. So you can insert those images, but again, these are not, uh, these are images inside of your drive, your photos, or on the web through a search, not something you can upload from your hard drive. The select button works for your images, it works for your sticky notes, but it is not going to work for the doodles. Um, keep in mind that maximum character count and that hyperlinks don't work. The sticky notes can come in different colors, and you can also change the colors of the pins. Um, don't forget your frame bar as a way to easily navigate or create new frames inside of your jam. And that the share button allows us to create those collaborators <clears throat> or possibly even just an open link for people to edit or view. And that takes us to the end of Google Jamboard. I hope you appreciated this video, and I hope you learned some things. 
Um, I could see easily Google Jamboard being a way to do a quick and easy um, discussion device, maybe similar to the way that some people might use the tool Padlet. You could use a similar thing here for Google Jamboard. Uh, students could use it as a way of kind of using it as a live bulletin board slash cork board, digital version of that, uh, to plan or to think, uh, perhaps in a project-based uh, learning unit, uh, you know, throw some ideas up there, brainstorm, uh, all those different things I could easily see as useful um, utilizations of this tool. So I hope you try out Google Jamboard, and thank you very much for listening.